let's work. Yo, it's go time, show time, never back in downtime. One shot, yo, make it count, yo. Crunch time, shine time, make this moment my time. Get a grip, yo, ready, set, go. We bring the thunder. Bring the thunder. Let's work. Bring the thunder. Let's go. Bring the thunder. Let's work. Bring the thunder. Let's go. Yeah, it's my time, yo time, step into the spotlight. Get lit, yo, let yourself go. High time, high time, gotta go big time. This is it, yo, never take no fight time. Grind time, take it to the street time. Turn the roof off, get low, go. Game time, win time, we gon' bring it home time. No regrets now, let it all go. We bring the thunder. Well, hello, welcome. Today we find ourselves with this beautiful Audi RS5 that comes in that lovely gloss black color. This car has got a wide stance. It's got just different pieces or different parts compared to the previous generation. Starting off with the grille, which is bigger and wider than before. This is the preface of this new generation, so bear that in mind. So everything has been blackened. So you've got the Quattro badging there. Then you've got the honeycomb and the lovely daytime running lights on this side as well which are very modern. Then you've got the, the parts over there which channel all the air to the brakes and the wheels. It's funny because the left one is closed, but the right one is open. I don't know what's that all about. But um, as you guys can see with the bonnet there, you've got some four lines there, which give it a masculine stance, that masculine appearance. And you can tell this car means business. If you are in front of this car and it's coming behind you, you just move out the way. So with this car, I think myself, I'd prefer to get it tuned by Opt. I'd send it to Germany, get Opt to tune it up. It's only got 450 horsepower, which is the same as before, but now it's got a 2.9 Porsche derived engine. And now as you guys can see, I'm pointing at the slats on the side, which are fake. I do love how you've got the 20, 20 inch wheels in that two tone in that black and aluminum finished color scheme there, or the steel brakes. As I was saying, guys, I think for me personally, I would definitely get this car sent to up so they can tune it up, give it like a, maybe a, I don't know, a rim up second stage, get some extra carbon fiber parts as well. I do love how this also comes with the tilting sunroof, which we tracked as well. Then you've also got the blackened night pack, which means all your windows surrounds are also black as well. Now comparing this shape to the previous, to the first Audi A5, you can tell this one, that it's been evolved ever so slightly. It's even got like, the perfect Porsche ride height. When you compare the Porsche 911s, when you look at the wheel to the uh, wheel arch distance, it's very similar. So it gives this car more of a sporty dynamic drive as well. So this car has got an eight speed ZF gearbox or a torque converter, I believe. Then you've also got the um, Quad Trezor, which is a 60-40 split. Now I also like how you've got the daytime run lights on the back as well, which are also LED as well. Then you've also got the blackened RS5 badge in there on the side. So you've also got the uh, RS5 badging and also the exhaust that we know for being an RS product. You've also got a fake diffuser, which as I said before, if you buy parts from Alpt, you can get like a proper diffuser as well. But otherwise, you know, Audi 8 out of 10 for the design, 8 out of 10. 
What is up, many guys? I do welcome to my channel. It's your boy, and I'm back again. So, today we find ourselves in another nice, beautiful car. Big ups to Lucas Premium, guys. Make sure you guys go check them out for any new car or old car. These guys sell anything from an Audi A3 upwards to a Porsche Taycan Gran Turismo, which is over there, as you guys can see. They also sell different cars like the Porsche. So, you got the Porsche Boxster, you got a Tesla there, and you got a Porsche Cayman McLaren 540. Rolls Royce Ghost, which I'm doing a, a podcast in tomorrow. So they sell all type of stuff. I'll leave the link down below. So just check them out. Yeah. So, anyways, with this car as well, it's gonna go live on sale. So if you're gonna buy an Audi RS5, this is the car for you. These guys will make sure everything is serviced and speak and span. So, anyways, moving on. So with this car, I'm interested to try and just you know have a little look about the car because recently I was in a BMW M2 competition and I loved that. Now I'm going to compare this to that. I know that's like a little baby. So that should be compared to like an R Audi RS3. But the both coupes, the both quick, that's about I think 400 horsepower as a 410. This is 450. That's down on power, but it's light on, you know, it's lighter on its uh on its feet. Whereas this is a little bit heavy. This weighs about 1,500 kilos, I think, which is not that heavy, but you know, it's still kind of heavy. So we'll talk about the interior and just go from there so all i'll do is i'll turn the camera around so you guys can see what i'm looking at right guys so welcome to the interior of this lovely car so as you guys can see you've got this lovely audi virtual cockpit and the screen as well that's lit up as well so one thing i tend to do is I always judge how sporty the sitting position of a car is by using a virtual ruler to just you know um to just compare the position of the steering wheel to my nose now whenever the steering wheel is corresponding to the bridge or to the middle of my nose, you know, which is Porsche, Ferrari. That's always the ultimate sitting position. With this car, as I've compared my nose in relevance to this um, the steering wheel, this just goes to the bottom of my nose, which tells me the car is not as sporty, you know, in terms of the position of the, of the seats. So Audi has always been generally all about just luxury and comfort compared to BMW and Mercedes-Benz. So it's what we expect from Audi, a comfortable space to sit. This is a cruiser and it's designed to also have sporty characters, but not try and, you know, um, and scare you. Whereas when you look at BMW with the M products or Mercedes-Benz with the AMG products, those are the more extreme out of the three brands. And there's nothing wrong with that. We know what Audi does. It's got a Quattro system, which has got, I think, a 60%, I think, uh, rear bias and 40% of the front. So I think whenever you drive normally, it's, I think, um, front, front wheel drive. Then when it detects that, you know, that you're struggling for power, then it will send 60 to the back and 40 to the front. So you know that this car is all about being safe at the same time and not being an ear. So that's just what you feel when you're sitting in here i don't feel as special as being in a bmw m2 competition that's a lot more special so this is the wheel it's got a flat bottom steering wheel you've got your typical audi buttons which are also found in bentley as well as other different um you know brands part of the volkswagen group which is not a bad thing but i'm just saying one thing i do love is you've got these extended flappy pedals which i would prefer maybe in a in a metal component because that is plastic and does feel a bit cheap they do betray by showing you the nice like metal over there then the back is just like hard plastic and then you've got the virtual cockpit which i love so this is the pre-facelift so which means you've got the smaller screen saying you're almost out of feel i forgot this is not touchscreen the new i think the new uh facelift's got the touchscreen whereas this one's not so you've got to do that and just press it down so in terms of the layout and everything else, it feels economical. You can tell they've thought about a person sitting down and being able to reach the most frequently used buttons. So with this, you find like, you know, you probably use view quite a lot to change your display, which I'll show you guys when I turn on the car. And you've got your navigation, then you've got your command there. One thing I love is the LED or the, um, the, inter or the interior light. They call them the... What's the other name for them? The um, ambient lighting. So you've got ambient lighting on your speakers when you turn on the car. Then also it comes on, on that metallic part as well. It doesn't feel like an overkill like Mercedes-Benz do. Mercedes do an overkill. Then you've got your buttons as well, which are for your normal functions. 
And then you've got your heated seats on there. Then you've got these buttons for your aircon, which feel quite expensive. I love that extra sound as well. Then you've got your gear shifter there. You've got your swivel wheel. This does feel a little bit dated compared to Audi's latest cars. The latest cars do feel, you know, just that more forward. This feels Tyrannic 2019. With the new facelift, it's got the new software, which is a lot better in terms of how fast it operates. So what I'll do is I'll turn on the car for you guys so you can hear what the car sounds like. Before I continue with that, guys, let me just also run some uh, some specs by you. So this car does 0 to 60 in about probably 4, well, no, but they'll say 3.9 seconds, but it depends also on the weather. I think when it's a day like this where it's wet, you might probably get the early falls. And also this car has got a 444 horsepower engine it's got a 2.9 liter petrol engine which comes from the porsche panamera so it's down on uh, cylinders from the previous gen which is a v8 it sounds okay but you have to put a um, you know an aftermarket exhaust it doesn't sound too loud so what i'll do is i will get the windows down just slightly so you guys can hear what the car sounds like and then let's do this start So that's the car in that speed. We'll let it start up and just do a, a little cold, cold rev. It doesn't sound that great, does it? So we'll go to, to drive select. We'll put it in dynamic. So now it should sound louder. So you can see your torque as well. We'll just open the sunroof. That's not opened up at all. I don't know why it's not done that. Oh, you've got to press that as well. Okay. All right, so we'll just stop the car now. So as I was saying guys, that this car does have that subdued factor and you can hear with the exhaust as well that's subdued as well i'm not sure how i feel about that so what i'll do is i'll probably yeah that's okay that'll do that'll do as i was saying this car is subdued it doesn't have that crazy exhaust so if you're going to buy this car you're somebody who doesn't like to feel unsafe so you're going to go for this car and um you know it does you know have some sports character but not too much so for me i'd rather get a racing license and drift the bmw m2 competition or even the bmw m2 the uh what's the other one called the cl edition because i know i'll have a lot of fun with our car yes with this one i think it's definitely just not my style alternative what you can do you can get yourself an audi s5 get it chipped and then just you know get the uh gearbox chipped as well and that's you done you'll get the same performance now this obviously does have a better software system which you know is able to adjust the the chassis you know a little bit more better so if you were to do if you were to go down the s5 route you'd obviously not have as good a chassis as this but I think um, for what you're going to pay, these are like, what, probably 40 to 43K, depending on the spec. When these came out, they're like £90,000, depending on the spec. With this one, it's a medium spec. It doesn't even have a heads-up display. So for me, that's definitely something which I have to have. I've got to have a heads-up display, and this doesn't have it. So all in all, to sum up this car, it's a car which is, I think, for... People that don't know how to drive that fast or that spirited, then this is for you. And there's nothing wrong with that as well. You can have a car which is safe, which will take you from point A to point B without killing you. And this is with those sort of cars. Because even when you look at the BMW and the Mercedes-Benz, when you look at the M5 and the E63, even though those are all-wheel drive, but you can make sure you can change it to a real-wheel drive and it just drives with that, you know, with the obvious D characteristic. 
and this lacks that as well and i think in this day and time people want to drive like like crazy idiots so it's unfortunate i want to spend the money definitely not i'll get myself a bmw m4 comp the old generation but in terms of i think just this being a daily driver it's a fantastic daily driver it's got all the space that you need now one thing that i don't like is the piano black so when this was brand new you can tell this would have been nice because you know that's been used you've got a lot of scratches there um what else what else what else what else I mean, I don't want to bed mouth the car as much because I, I love Audis in general. But yes, so you've got your... You've got your thing there. You've got your wireless pad. So you can charge your phone in there. Then you've got your USB and your aux as well. And you've got your lovely centre armrest. In terms of the materials, I can't knock this car. This car's got some beautiful materials. The finish, you know, is fantastic. The only thing that I'll criticise it for, which... It's maybe kind of not fair is I'd prefer this as leather. But then again, this is not like um an A8. With an A8 you definitely get like leather on there, whereas with this you can't really get leather. But I mean if you're paying like 90k you prefer to get some leather, even that as well. But it's soft, but it's just like it's not real leather, is it? Um I do have the quilted Alcantara. <laughs> Sorry guys, I've got a cold today, so that's why I'm not talking properly. I've got a cold and a headache, but I'm doing this for you guys. So you've got the Alcantara, which has got the quilted pattern, which I do love. That is fantastic. In the back there, you barely have enough space for, you know, a grown adult. They can probably get in there for a good, I don't know, a good maybe say 20 minutes at, at best. And I will not be getting in the back because I'm sick, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> So, yes, guys, this is the Audi RS5. I finally got in one, and, yeah, it's okay. I prefer an Audi RS6 to this. I would buy an Audi RS6 because I think it's got more to give in terms of that V8, that sound. You know, the sound of an engine can can be an influence in whether you buy the car or not. And I think, for me, if this car sounded a lot better, then I would have favoured it, but because it doesn't, then that's where I'm just like, probably, you know, probably not. But then again, we we're moving towards our EVs and, and whatnot, so they'll be quiet as well. So maybe I'm just a hypocrite for that. Oh, my thing has just got a mind of its own. Right, guys, I'm trying to finish the video here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys soon. A peace. Thanks. Make sure you guys subscribe as well.